Was anyone who knew others who would be willing to um, share and, and talk to a club on Zoom? And Alain kindly came back and offered to speak to us tonight. And um, I checked out his website and yeah, he has some amazing images and has won a number of very prestigious awards. So I feel very honored, Alain, to have you with us tonight. And thank you for being willing to share with us. So I welcome you um, to just begin sharing your talk with us. Thank you, Nikki. Um, it's my honor and privilege um, to talk uh, with you today. Um, before I start, I just want to make sure if there are very, very young people watching, you know, some of the content content is like R13 or R15. I don't want to offend anyone. So um, if somebody is young, you know, just let me know in the chat and I'll skip some of the photos. There's nothing really too explicit, but uh, I don't want to offend anyone. Um, so just to tell you a little about me, um, I'm a portrait photographer. I, I'm here in Auckland. We're in lockdown currently. Um, I do family portraits uh, for a living. Um, some of it is glamour. Some of it is, um, you know, people who celebrate their birthdays and, um, but not really event photography. Some of it is fine art. So I do participate in sort of art shows um, around New Zealand. Wellington, Christchurch, Napier, um, the need in, uh, uh, I'm trying, let's put it this way. I'm an emerging artist. Um, so this is just a little about me. This um, seminar, I'd like to call it, is more of a Q and A. So the benefit of you participating in this session is that you're engaged. Um, unlike watching say a YouTube where you have no you cannot really direct the questions here. I want to encourage you, you know, to ask me if you are very comfortable, you can just, you know, unmute yourself and speak to the microphone. If you feel more comfortable uh, writing something on the chat, I have that open on another screen and I can see and I will try to answer you. And I think that will make our conversation more of a dialogue rather than me talking which could be extremely boring. So um, Fiona is smiling. Fiona, you're in the mist there. I'm not sure you're hazing, but at least I see your beautiful smile. Um, I've had a quick chat to uh, Kirsty, but she, uh, not sure she may join us. And um, I see that there's a few others on the Zoom. Um, so you're more than welcome to ask questions. So this, session today is about portrait photography. Now portrait photography is a large topic and I will start with some outdoor travel documentary photography and I will actually put a few links in the chat. So if you are at home and you'd like to explore these later, you could, but some of those credentials are here on the screen now. So I think what I'll do to start with is I'll try and navigate my way here. Um, and um, maybe if I can get my act together. So I will try maybe to do first, I'll do, um, so I'm sharing a screen here. This is, um, these are photos from Cairo. I will have a big exhibition, big. Mm. I had bigger, but um, I'll have an exhibition in May this year in um, a large gallery here. I'm getting one room, so it's not the whole, but it's nice gallery and I'm, I'm honored and privileged to um, get a space there. So this was in January, 2020, and I'll just see. And so um, sometimes you will see two photos. These are outdoor. I was in Egypt just for 11 days um how is that going to work for us this is like this and it's not going where i want to okay so um i usually choose the background i take around maybe 30 or 50 photos of a person sometimes i pay them this person is a grandparent and he actually um, spoke nice english many don't speak any english 
and he said he had like seven kids and lots of grandkids. And um, this is sort of a close up in a slightly different location. It was very harsh light. So I had trouble uh, finding a location that was slightly shaded. Um, and he received a $2 coin from another tourist who visited um, this place uh, in Cairo and he wanted to change it. And I had to give him like um, 30 Egyptian pounds for that $2, even though I had nothing to do with it now, but uh, he's a nice man. Uh, so this is how harsh that sun was on the other side. Um, so these are taken in color. Um, I've used a, a Sony camera, a 7 r 3 And um, the challenge with this photo is to balance the harsh shadows um, with the extreme bright light. Um, so he's just sitting there. Um, and it's very easy to blow out those lights here. But I like the composition. I he was sitting there. I didn't, I didn't pose him. He was just like doing that. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of questions. So I'll simply move on until someone will have the courage to ask a question. God. I like um, the way you're using uh, the uh, architectural features, you know, the light and darkness in the, in the walls and the column there. Uh, and also in some of the earlier one as well, the very first one where all the blocks of stone seem yeah, to Yeah, well, be, if I yeah. can... Um, yes, that one like there. It's like in situ. So the some of these photos are close-ups, just the face, um, and I try to remove the clutter from the background like this one. And sometimes it's more interesting. So I, if I have like more than 20 or 30 seconds, I will take more than two or three photos. I actually asked their permission. You, you can see that they look into the camera. This specific person is, was the driver and we drove in the desert, the white desert between Libya and Egypt. There is um, a very interesting desert and there is like in, in, interesting formations made of um, chalk. Um, and he wasn't happy because I asked him to take his cap off. He said to me, he's 46. I Obviously he's in his late 60s, early 70s, but um, yeah, he didn't like me as such. I wasn't, and I spoke, I'd said some things that upset him, but mainly because I asked him to take the cap off and he, yeah, that was his thing. Um, but here you can see um, sort of the, 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 the soft background. Um, this girl, uh, she has a fly on her eye. I hope the photo comes well in this Zoom. Um, so this is in sort of a restaurant. Uh, I went from the back and she was sitting there calm and she didn't even move her hand to take the fly away, to brush the fly away. So mm, I like that. And she, her parents were nearby and this was her sort of playground. Um, yeah, very calm baby, big eyes. And um, this was the kitchen. Um, so you will notice the men, most of the photos are of men because the women simply wouldn't let me have her photo taken or they're not out there on the street. So you'll see most of the men are smoking 95%-ish um, and they have nice rings. You will see those rings. This is a big boss in a car park um, in sort of a bus terminal. And I actually asked him to puff the smoke. So I would ask their permission. I learned uh, how to say in Arabic, can I take your photo? And um, most people were happy. And then I actually increased my chances by going near them and shaking their hand. And, and that would mean a lot to them. And then I actually gave them my card. And if they do speak English, I said, you know, you can connect me on WhatsApp and I'll send you the photos. Um, so here is another guy in that car park and uh, the photos are so crisp that you can actually see the smoke. Um, yeah, this is not a high resolution image on the screen. I've lowered it for presentation purposes, but um, yeah, I made the background slightly out of focus. This is taken with a 55 millimeter. And if you want to see a little bit more details, I can actually, um, I can actually, I think I right click on this and I can um, uh, file information. So I think you can see the file information here. Um, so this was taken with a 55 millimeter lens, um, F1.8. So that's why the shallow depth of field. Um, yeah. 
let's see if we can move back. God, what did I do now? Okay. So, yeah. So this is taken in Alexandria. Again, very harsh sunlight. Um, a shoe, shoe shine. Mm. And uh, there are people who do that. I did ask service of one of these. I mean, they're happy people. They're not, they're not well off by any stretch. Um, and um, this guy was, uh, he was supposed to sweep the floor in this sort of fortress citadel or something um, in Alexandria. And that's how he was standing. I didn't pose him, but you can see the harsh light with the, those two lines of the, yeah, the, this is very harsh. Um, it's a bit more challenging to create okay photos with such. I like the shadow. So this is in a shadow. So people sit on the street. They just sit there. Um, yeah, not sure what they're doing. And they just sit there. So they, there's no cell phones and they're quite uh, easy going. Uh, some people didn't like me taking their photos and I just went away. Um, so this, this is a square crop. The square crop, I like it. Sometimes it adds to the image. He's a little bit off center and there is this bag. You can actually read something about Nile and it does say, it says Egypt here, but it's hard to read. Um, and you can see the, the street. Um, this guy sits in another location. Um, yeah, and you know, it's just interesting how he sits there with these other two chairs. Um, and I like his expression and how he puts his fist against his um, knee like that. Um, no questions, okay. Um, this guy is a bit more... Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I had a question. Um, just, are you posing them or is this just the way they happen to be standing or sitting? So this guy was sitting here this guy was sitting there, um, this guy was sitting. I, I don't usually move them, but sometimes I do. Maybe with that person, I did ask him to move slightly because there was some bright thing behind him. Uh, he was speaking good English and um, he came back from his office, I think. Um, so maybe I moved him a little bit, but not a lot. And I asked him to look at me. So I do ask them to look at me but that's that. So, and sometimes I don't even need that um, because they're looking at me. All um, the poses seem to be eyes directly at the camera. None of them are off-centered. No, I, I asked them to look at me. This is, this is the owner of this um, shop. They sort of fix radiators or whatever it is, compressors. And I first photographed his assistant and then he came in. So I gave him the honor and he, you can see they, they drink coffee you know, maybe a lot of, and the rings, and he sits there, you know, big boss, and this is his shop, and it's hard, so I'm using a flash, I had a very tiny flash, the smallest, I think, two AAA batteries, that's all it had, no dials, nothing, so I sort of reflected it off a small reflector that I carried with me, uh, so it's not as harsh, and, um, but it really is like, I couldn't carry a big, I could carry, but my shoulders are giving up. So I, uh, and that's like inside his store at night. Um, we'll see a few more photos with Flash. And he was sitting there. I may have told him to put his um, hand on his knee like that, maybe. Uh, I can't remember. Um, but basically this is his place. Um, yeah. So this is actually in a market. I didn't, I didn't make it monochrome. Monochrome is my signature style, but you know, this is, they have a big market at night and that specific vendor had these head scarves and he put those mannequins heads on the ground, on the floor. So there's a car behind. Um, yeah. So we'll see a, a few shopkeepers. So he's not a happy chap, but I asked for his permission. He said, yes. So, that's it. Um, he's got some flower or some sort of um, something behind him that is white. Mm. Not sure what. And I, you know, I like the portrait. Um, I think that this photo was uh, published at the D Photo magazine about four or five months ago. I thought I would have an exhibition. I actually applied to Creative New Zealand and I was really hopeful because I had lots of um, endorsements from the president 
of the PSNZ, Moira, and from the president of the North Shore Photograph Society, even from a very important um, curator at a very large gallery. Um, and I actually had a gallery lined up. So I had everything, all my ducks in a row, and I spent about 40 or 50 hours writing my application and who, what, when, where, why, how much. And um, the reply came back. This was sort of a pandemic uh, emergency funding for artists. And I was really hoping to get something so I can do my promotion and hire the gallery because the gallery wasn't cheap. And the answer was no. After And then I asked for feedback. It took them like five weeks to give me the feedback, which is suspicious. But um, the feedback was those photos are conventional. So if you say to me, my photos are conventional, I kill myself. Um, not funny. I'm not sure if anyone is smiling. Fiona, you're not smiling. My jokes are not as good today. Oh, here we have a smile. I pushed you against the wall. God. Um, so anyway, they, they said that this is sort of um, no innovation. And I asked myself, how much innovation can you have in documentary photography? You click a button. It's not, it doesn't come from the imagination, unlike other art genres, like sculpture or painting or poetry. This, you know, I don't, this is supposed to be realism is part of the, of, you know, it's, it's embedded into this um, genre. So here we see a person um, sort of with a shishash and a coffee. That's a, it's nice. Look at that interesting sort of background here. Um, the, the crescent and whatever it is, uh, but I didn't want it to be very much in focus. Um, and there's another coffee shop with a little bit of brass. The challenge here was he was looking down. There was a very big fluorescent here above, but his head was in the shade where his, everything else was sort of blown away. Um, so coffee shop, huh? Yeah, and so these characters in the street, um, yeah, they're, they're nice people. And you can actually see some of them have this sort of blister on their forehead. And that's, I think, almost for sure. Um, they're praying to Allah five times a day. They pray and they hit their head against these carpets in mosques uh, or wherever they are. And that creates, I mean, if you bang your head five days, five times a day, every day, um, that will create some mark on your forehead. Um, and some have it more pronounced than others. Um, Was it winter? Everyone's wearing winter, jackets. But when you say winter, this is Africa. So winter, yeah. I mean, he's wearing a lot of coats. I don't know. Look, it was about maybe 17, maybe 15 degrees. No wind. I, it's not really cold. But um, yeah, I had a jacket, but Look, some people wear a lot of layers, we'll see in a minute. Um, it is winter, yes. Uh, summer is too hard to travel there. You, you don't want to travel to Egypt in summer. Um, yeah. So this guy is quite a nice guy. He sits there at the entrance to his shop and you can see a cross or two here. Can you see that, Timothy? Um, yes. So he, he folded these sort of Utah bags or whatever that is and he sits there, and this is sort of framing him inside the entrance to his shop. He's um, the only one who's smiling. <laughs> yeah, he's smiling and nice. And look, he's obviously, you know, poor. Um, he sits on these very vintage chairs, and this shop has seen better days. Um, there is some photos in the background. I could have come closer to him, but I really wanted to get that frame. And so I couldn't get any closer with my 55, and I didn't have time to change my lenses. He was busy and I didn't want to disturb him too much, but I did ask his permission. And obviously he was very happy. Um, so this is another market, um, but this is outdoor. So he sells these sort of coats and things. And this is the headpiece he's wearing. It's a bit busy. The background is slightly, so the background is as important as the foreground, as the, as the person. And sometimes there's too much in the background and I, I would just skip a photo or if the, or if the, light conditions are too harsh, I would just go away. Um, this guy names is David, and I spoke with him a little bit. He sells these shoes. 
again, open market, um, and there's the, you know, the cars in the background and all sorts of things. I had to maybe clear a little bit of that clutter, but not a lot. Um, nice beard. Yeah, I liked how he looked very sort of serious. Um, and this is like a food stall. Not sure what the rating, um, but, you know, happy guy. This is the street, you know, this, I mean, Cairo is full of this, like it's, you know, health and safety is not top. And the whole thing is like falling apart, literally. Uh, everything is deteriorating um, and it's really is busy and, and polluted to the nth degree. Um, but, you know, this is Africa. So um, if somebody here has visited Cairo, they will, they might want to add, no one put, has put a single question um, so this guy wears a lot of layers. I love his beard. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five layers. Um, yeah. So I would take about 20, maybe 30 photos, and then I would choose the best one. And sometimes I crop it in two ways, and sometimes I reconsider and I retouch it later. Um, so this is a bit humoristic. I asked him to stop for a minute. He was busy clearing these chairs. So he sat here and then he lifted these two rocks for the photo, just for the joke. Um, so it's good. Um, this guy I had to pay. So I bargained with him. The problem with bargaining, you agree on a price and then after you finish, they say, oh, this is in, 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 in US dollars, not in Egyptian pounds. So US dollar, you know, one British, one US dollar is 16 Egyptian pounds. So it's quite a big difference. So I made sure with bargaining with him that this is Egyptian pounds. And he had this grandchild or something roving behind him and sort of doing faces and fingers and things. And I really wanted the grumpy person. Look how grumpy that is. So um, yeah, look, sometimes, you know, they give me their time, they give me their image. If I think they are ugly enough, I would pay their money um, if it's worth it, absolutely. Plus, you know, it's fair. So, but most people didn't ask me. Sometimes I paid even if they didn't ask me because I felt they were good. Um, and look, he's got this ring here, which is quite nice. And these are lighters, Not you cannot see very much, but he sells these lighters for cigarettes. Um, but look at his, you know, sort of posture against the table and sitting down like that. And one eye is sort of um, winking for lack of a better word. Um, there's a bit of a close up here. So yeah, they have donkeys and carts and things. It's quite interesting. Um, and this guy kept moving. Somehow I got him to freeze but just for one second, um, but a lot of clutter in the background. Anyway, they have- There's a question here. in your chat, Alain. In the chat, did you go to Cairo, especially for the portraits? How the five layer portrait might be in a portrait format. So we're gonna go to the five layer portrait first. This could be in a square format. It could be in a portrait format. It's up to you. I take most of these in sort of a horizontal, um, not the one at the shop where he was sitting down, but most of them would be horizontal. I then decide if I want to crop it. So sometimes a negative space would add, it will just show a bit more of the ambient uh, environment. Yes, I, Inger, um, answering Inger, uh, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, I went to Cairo specifically to create a portfolio. So I invested my time and money and energy and everyone I spoke with said, do not go. Um, I am originally from Israel, I'm Jewish and there are some risks involved, even though there is peace, you know, if people find out I could be in trouble, it depends on the circumstances. And also there was another photographer from Israel who, not a photographer, but he photographed a soccer game using his phone. And then he said something to a security guy who asked him and he spent two weeks in jail. 
until somebody from the parliament intervened, the Israeli Knesset. So I didn't want to end up in jail. This was not my ideal vacation. And I, you know, so I sort of took some precautions and I, I printed all sorts of letters that I received previously from people who endorsed me when I asked for grants. I never received any grant. God, why is it so difficult? But um, I've actually asked again, maybe this time, because I have this exhibition. Actually, the other exhibition I spoke to you about 10 minutes ago, because I didn't get any money from Creative New Zealand, I actually canceled the exhibition. It was too expensive for me to run, um, which was bad. I mean, I've never canceled an exhibition before. This was not the only reason, but one, I mean, I cannot, this is an expensive exercise to run an exhibition and print maybe 40 or 50 of these in large format, which is what I intended, uh, and hiring the gallery. That was like $10,000 um, plus running the promotion. I, this is about, and these are not commercial as you can tell. So anyway, this could be in a portrait, but why would you put it in a portrait? I think a square could work nicely here. Um, and it's okay to print it in landscape. It's not a big deal. He's still occupying a large proportion of the screen. Uh, here, I think a square is better than, than a, but this works well. Uh, it depends on what you want to convey. Both of these work well. Um, here, I needed to crop some of the noise. This is why this is slightly odd. It's not a square, but it's not a three by four. Um, but here it is a vertical photo. This is, I think, exactly what I saw on the day. Um, and answering your question again, Inger, um, I did go to Cairo spe specifically to create this. So I, I almost didn't go to see the pyramids because I thought, no, I want to see people. But um, once I got enough people and I thought, OK, I, I sort of understand the game. I thought, okay, I'll, I want to see a bit more. So we'll see a pyramid or two. But um, yeah, I'm a portrait photographer. Um, but the thing you can see, everyone is looking into the camera. Um, this is a night photo and he's pushing this cart and he sells these sort of mandarins and clementines and, and I think maybe oranges, um, but it's a night photo. There was a lot of light. I had to retouch some of this, um, but he still stands out. Obviously there's not enough light. If I click on this to see the properties, the file information, this is um, 1 25th of a second handheld, only 250 ISO. Look, Sony is a good camera, but um, the camera doesn't take photos. It does have built-in stabilization. I'm not here to promote Sony, but it is a good camera. So um, I now have a different camera, but still Sony. Um, you can see how good it is. Handheld, 1 25th of a second is not easy. Um, but so let's talk about this photo. So this photo I took with another camera. This is 1600 ISO. Um, does anyone recognize any of these people here? Anyone at all? Anyone recognize anyone here? Can you see that? Fiona is smiling-ish. I don't see Nicole. I don't see E. I think E is a code name, but I don't want to repeat that name because it's secret. Jen, do you know any one of these? Not sure. Where is, where is Nikki? No one. Okay, so I'll just... This is Anwar Sadat. He was assassinated after signing a peace treaty with Israel. He's actually showing here too. This is Karim Abdul Nasser. Uh, I think he was assassinated too. He was the president. He, he started the six day war with Israel, which didn't end out so good for Egypt. This is Assisi, the current president. So this guy was sitting somewhere here and this was his shop. I don't know what he sells. It's not really clear, but it says invest here. And there is a silhouette of the pyramids and it says DHL, slightly small. Maybe you cannot see it. Anyway, I think this is his son. So I asked him to go to the back because I wanted him to be inside his shop. And this is sort of a beautiful arch and there's a huge fluorescent here, which um, I couldn't have in the photo. So I had to crop it there. Um, it's a nice person. He holds his sunglasses for some reason. It was middle of the night and he, it took him about one minute to get all the way here with his cane, um, but he was happy. I just needed to make sure his cap is not too bright. 
Uh, and also I needed to correct the distortion here. Um, Inger is sorry. I'm not sure what you're sorry, Inger. You don't have to be sorry, be happy. Um, yeah, so anyway, I like this photo. Yeah, no questions. Um, this guy, you can see his rings, beautiful rings with sort of a Band-Aid um, or a plaster. So he sells these apples. This is in the street. You can see the cars and he sells those strawberries. Um, and he smiled beautifully and I didn't want him to smile. And I asked him to bring the zipper up. Oh, you don't have to recognize these leaders. Believe me, you know, as, as not, I, I'm, I come from Israel, I understand. So Inger is saying, sorry for not recognizing those leaders. Don't worry about it. Um, anyway, I asked him to bring the zipper up because he had big logos here and he was really happy. Yeah, we're happy to comply. Um, we're trying to move on because we have a lot to cover today. And lots, not lots asking of, questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, leather Speak jackets. Speak up, are please. In. Obviously, leather jackets are in, in Egypt. The no. le yeah. Oh, I'm losing you. Is that working now? Yeah. Um, obviously, leather jackets are in, in Israel, um, in, in, in Egypt. Okay. Uh, look. Uh, wearing leather. Well, I don't know. You've seen two people. I, I don't know. No, like, no, no. Lots more than that. I, look, I maybe that he's leather. wearing a leather jacket too. Look, maybe. Mm. I wear yeah. a leather jacket too. What does that mean? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, no, I, I just noticed, um, Alan, that there are many men are wearing leather jackets. Like you don't see it here in New Zealand very often at well, all. Well, you should try Even wearing leather jackets. It's nice. Fighter pilots. And uh, if you work for the Mossad like me, or if you are in Egypt, you want to look I, more. I, I do wear one on special occasions, uh -huh. but not very often. I don't wear it every day. Are you the vicar? No, he was asking questions before. So who are you? What is your name? Identify yourself. I'm I'm Stuart Nimmo and I know you. Oh, you are know me. God. Yeah. I should be careful. How how no. can you talk without your name highlighted? You're talking through the but, roaming. Somebody told me that you're gonna be there, Stuart. God uh, we're, we're, no, the name's not highlighted because I I'm in the in the group with the, I understand. the, group with the others. So that's why. Well hey, if I if I step beyond my um if I step on people's toes, just tell me off or just no. mute the microphone. I think Just, uh, he's the admin. He can do that any minute. He threatened me already, um, but that's okay. Yes, look, maybe they have leather jackets. I mean, I've never noticed it, but thank you for... Mm. I just noticed the rings and the smoking and some yeah. other bits. Um, how are you, Stuart? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, okay. just uh, uh, one, one thing of interest. Um, it's a completely irrelevant, but we were trying to leave Cairo to go to Israel the day that so that um, was assassinated. Uh -huh. How mm. was your visit to Cairo? Crazy, wonderful, crazy. wonderful and crazy. Yeah. I rest my case. So yeah. here, if you want to um, drill an oil field, come to this guy. He will actually give you uh, Abdel Aziz Karbri. Uh, he's a lawyer, apparently, not sure. And um, so he sits there. Yeah, entrance to his um, yeah office. And and then you're are you using thirty five mil for a lot of this portrait stuff? It says here actually uh, fifty five mil. Fifty five. Mm. Yep. Yeah, fifty five mil. Sometimes with the previous ones, um, this one I actually used um, twenty four millimeters. So I was um, on a chair balancing myself and I needed to capture a lot inside the store. So I had a zoom 24 to 105 and I, um, it caused a lot of distortions because I was really close to some objects. So I had to be careful that his head is not distorted. And I really wanted those frames to be slightly horizontal. Yeah. You can see, and also for these to be vertical. And so I had to correct it and that caused a lot of issues. 
So ideally, you're not using wide angle lenses when the subject is not parallel to the subject. So I would like to be a bit more distance. I don't mind using 24, even 12 mil, but only if my subjects are really in front of my camera and I don't need to tilt the lens, otherwise it causes issue. Um, so here's this guy, there's another portrait of him uh, sitting down. I like this better because it shows, I have a question here. These photos mostly manual or autofocus? Everything is autofocus. God, this is, I pay enough money to Sony, they can do the focus. I don't need to do the focus. You have a machine, the machine is an extension of your creativity for that, for that matter. I don't need to focus, the, the, Sony focuses beautifully on the eye and yeah, I rest my case. Um, happy guy, and this is his pack and save sort of uh, carton box cutting. He's got all sorts of um, junk food there and some uh, pistachio and other stuff. And he's happy with his headpiece and tummy. Uh, and obviously this is very cool. Um, so this guy, look, I retouched. There was somebody there climbing on this ladder in the background, um, but it, there's no seat to the bike. There's no seat. There's actually no pedals either. I think this is the brake. It's sort of a manual sort of break there's no wires but the whole thing falls apart i think there's no chain either now that i notice there is no chain between this and anything like there's nothing is just uh the whole thing is sort of uh sh yeah so he pushes this using this handlebar and he's got bananas yeah bananas um moving on again a little bit of negative space and you can see the environment um this guy was uh cleaning sort of cobwebs from the top, lots of layers. I tried to capture him with the broom all the way to the top, not the broom, the brush, it's quite tall. I think horizontal, he, he really tried to his best for me to take the photo. He did this, it, I couldn't talk to him. He didn't know a word in English, but um, nice guy. Um, and this is at night in a market. He sells these uh, sort of, um, I don't know. I think these are like wallets, women's purses. I don't know. Uh, right. No questions from you? No, you don't want to ask me a question. I only approach you because your name is showing. I cannot approach E and Jen hasn't said a word, not even a smile. I don't know. Yes, yes. Can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, that's right. That's it. Um, so here we have a gentleman with his cart. Again, at night, one, I have a very tiny flash. So this is, yeah. 125th of a second, ISO 400. Um, look at the beautiful rings and look how he holds the cigarette. This is uh, Merlin Monroe pose-ish. Um, yeah, at night. And this guy, so he was sitting there in his jewelry shop at night and he spoke good English and his grandchild, I think maybe six years old, maybe five, brought him some coal, hot, hot charcoal to put inside here, he took this sort of, so that would ignite his um, herbs or whatever it was that he was smoking through this apparatus and his coffee is here. And I really wanted to get some smoke. So he did it a few times for me. Very nice person. Um, lots of jewelry. Yeah, I didn't buy anything, not from him. Um, there's a grumpy guy here. You can see these sort of beads. I think these are, um, for reciting the chapters or the verses from the Quran. So it's like meditating you, you move your fingers across, it's quite uh, relaxing. And every time you move one bead, you say something in your heart or something to that effect. Um, I like how grumpy he is, but yeah, this is his card. Maybe he sells slippers or something to that effect. Um, oh, I love this um, portrait. So this guy was sitting, he was actually sweeping the floor outside the Cairo Museum, it's in Tahrir Square, they had big riots there. And he just, I moved him because I didn't want to have too much clutter in the background. I mean, I cannot move him 300 meters. I could move him maybe three, four meters, but he posed beautifully and he really enjoyed the attention because I showed him, 
I not just him, but I showed him the photos at the back of my camera. So this is at, at um, yeah, it says here 55 mil f 1.8. And that's why I create such a beautiful bouquet. Um, but I love the headpiece and I love his eyes and all his face and everything is, um, you know, very detailed. I love these. Um, so this looks guy, like life is very hard for a lot of them. Say again? It looks like life is very hard for a lot of them. What do you mean light is very hard? Life is very hard? Yeah, I mean, you know, very aged, very withered faces. Oh, yes. They don't live long. They don't take good care of themselves. You know, they, you know, nutrition. They work, I think, something like 14 or 16 hours a day. Um, they smoke. They, um, there is lots of accidents. I, I saw dozens of motorcycles, even policemen. No one wears a helmet ever. They don't wear seat belts. This is like, why would they wear a seat belt? I was driving from one place to another. Um, in an Uber, they would put a seat belt, I think, but mostly not. But uh, I drove from the desert and this guy was really, he was really upset and he couldn't smoke because no one in the car smokes. So he, but he, for the lack of smoking, he would put huge blasting music and the windows were closed. Windows were closed because he was driving so fast. I mean, when, when I say fast, like 150 kilometers per hour and um, no seat belt. And it was so hot. I tried to turn on the air conditioner or something. It was like, yeah, he was so upset, but he was driving like a madman. And I, look, I'd never, I want to tell you a secret. Don't tell anyone. I paid bribe to get my driving license. So this was in Thailand. You couldn't get your driving license without paying a bribe. So I had another test here. I didn't pay a bribe here, but in Thailand, I was 18. I couldn't get my driving. Anyway, I drive naturally, like how you drive when you want to drive, not when you are being taught. So I know what's driving and I've driven in Italy and in New York. So I know how people drive in other places, but in Egypt, I may want to show you a video, but we don't have time for this. So this guy, um, apparently, this is a saint, maybe a Christian saint. And this is a verse, somebody from Egypt that I photographed in my studio here in Auckland um, translated and he told me what that says here on the wall. And this guy, I think he's maybe 12 and he's, yeah, he sits there smoking and this is his shop and he repairs shoes. Ah, so I like this photo. Mm. I did pay him something. Yeah, and th look, this is not leather, but it's, I'm not sure how to say the four letter fox, fox, fox. How do you say that? Um, foul, but uh, it's peeling apart, but he's happy. Um, I did clean my shoes with this guy because I went through a lot of mud and he was so delighted that I took his photos. I did use my small flash. So this is um, 1000 ISO and there were lots of cars in the background and lights that was very, so I had to sort of remove these slightly in Photoshop. Um, so this is a shop owner, obviously, and he's got something like, I don't know, pharm pharmaceutical slash um, some sort of uh, creams, um, not sure, hair products, I don't know. Anyway, this is an interesting portrait from above using, um, what is that? It says here 24 mil, which is, you know, my zoom lens. Uh, so um, again, my flash, he does sell these oranges. The taste is beautiful because they're not using any chemicals, but uh, yeah, not sure about pesticides and herbicides and things. Mm. Uh, there were two women here. And when I asked to photograph, they ran away, like literally, and these men were laughing all over. And um, so this is a street light that puts a light on these. Um, and they couldn't care less, obviously. And the women simply wouldn't be in the photos. Why? I think it's against their culture or something. Um, I love this. So this guy, look, he's exhausted. This is like nine or nine thirty PM. And, um, and this is street light here. The whole thing is like crumbling, very beautiful grandeur, but it's like crumbling. This is his cart. He's, he's like, you know, obviously moving things from one place to another and he's just taking a rest. And I like how there is nothing here to distract us. And he sits there exhausted. Yeah, I really love it. But mm. um, so this is 
the citadel. This is like um, the backyard of uh, a big mosque. The ha, uh, what's the, 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 this is um, what's the name of the mosque? Um, escapes me now, but um, it will come back to me maybe. And anyway, I forgot my 12 to 24 zoom at home. This is bad. If you go all the way to Egypt, make sure you've got all the lenses in your bag. Um, but this is, you know, my senior moment. Anyway, so this is um, a stitch of eight photos and I had to correct some of the distortions. And then I had to correct the clouds because some of them were here, but none here. And I wanted to get those sort of um, crescents um, against white because otherwise you don't see those crescents. So it's a little bit of Photoshop here, maybe 20, maybe 30 hours ago. Um, and this was really dark, but I was able to lift it through the raw image. Um, so this was raining here. And so there's no one here, but this is the backyard. So the name of this uh, mosque is, um, yeah, it is, it is, I'm not sure. Uh, hmm. Come back to me. So that's the inside of the mosque. Um, so I put the camera on the ground. It's not really a portrait. And I put it on self timer. And then I retouched it slightly HDR, I think. But I, so this is actually the colors of the ceiling, a beautiful ceiling. Um, and yeah, no questions, nothing at all. Um, so he's the keeper of the shoes. So as you enter a mosque, you need to give them your shoes and he will take your money if you are a foreigner. Um, and he wasn't happy, but I asked him and he didn't say no. So here's the photo. So we see so another bit. Are, are you, you're traveling, um, what, with a Kiwi passport, are you? I have two passports. Yeah. But I entered, and, yeah. Enter, you enter Egypt with a Kiwi one, I presume. Yeah. And when you're talking to these people, do they know your, Israeli or you well, know if I if I drive with them if I get to know them if they're friendly I would say to them that I come from Israel yeah. mostly I wouldn't say I mean I'm not hiding it but look I was driving for about four hours in a van that was they have the Quran you know interpretation and, and somebody you know chanting about this and I understood this is and the Quran doesn't really like Jewish people at all mm. and mm. and sometimes you know, I would hear something about, you know, um, Yahud, which means Jewish in Arabic. And I would, I know some Arabic just because I was born in Israel and raised. And so I speak yep. a few words, uh, maybe 50 words, not a lot. I cannot make a huge sentence, but um, enough to get by. So I did go into one street at night and I sort of lost my way. And I realized this is, there's no people here and this is nowhere that anyone can help me and it's not really public space. And so I, I tried to be a bit quick to leave that place, um, yeah. especially after somebody said something about Yahud, you know, led. so I, I tried to be semi-discreet. I, I was okay, I look, um, but it depends where you go and who you talk with. Most people, they have no problem with Israel. Most people just wanna get by. Most people, you know, I asked them about, you know, the presidents, this president versus that president. And uh, just to strike a small conversation, they were really mostly very concerned about saying anything bad about the administration. There is huge number of police and military on the streets. They had the Muslim brothers and they were, they, you know, they blew up a, an airplane that took off from Sharm el-Sheikh, which is in the Sinai Peninsula. And that hurt the, you know, all those terrorist attacks hurt tourism, the, the tourism dropped by 50%. Um, most people in New Zealand will not go to Egypt and because of that and other reasons. Um, but, um, you know, tourism is key for these people and, and they lost huge amount of income because of, so they're trying to maintain safe environment. That's why there's so many um, police. And so because there's so many people that are in this sort of um, government positions, you know, they will support the government because they get paid by the government. And that's how you maintain power when it's sort of a dictatorship. So, um, yeah, it's a delicate situation. I wasn't, yeah, I would say to people, especially if they spoke English, I had no problem. Um, so this guy is, 
I think he's 10 or 12 and he hurt his finger. He's got some bandage here, I think. Um, and he sells these bananas at night, no seat, no seat. Um, yeah, I'm not sure there is a chain now that I look at it here. I'm not sure what's here, but um, yeah, they work really hard, really hard. Um, yeah. And this guy sits, I'm not sure he's got a second foot. I think this is one foot here. I'm not sure what happens here with the other foot. Anyway, he leans against his cane rings um, and this is street light. So it's not that easy to take in street light, but you know, you have to get by. Um, yeah, that's 4,000 ISO. Very little noise here if I tweak myself correctly in Lightroom. So I had a dinner here, I was starving. If I go to a place and it has a lot of people eating, it's okay. Um, you can see the blister on his head from those prayers and um, the name of the restaurant here ish. Um, he was doing these shish kebabs in hand and putting them in the oven behind him. No menu in English, nothing. I just pointed at things and they gave it to me. Um, everything is relatively cheap in these places. And um, yeah, good food. I, I survived the food. Mm. I tried to be careful, but yeah. So this is a taxi driver. He wasn't happy. Uh, then he showed me that he lost one foot. He wanted to drive me, but I already had an Uber. The Uber is much cheaper and you don't have to bargain. It just comes off your phone. It's very cheap. Um, and that's him posing on sort of a barrier. Um, yeah. Again, somebody, he was sitting there and he was smoking. Um, nice pose. And again, interesting headpiece and interesting the way he looks at me um, from the corner. Um, I love these portraits. There's another one here. He's eating these bagels. And this is sort of za'atar, which is a sort of a herb in that small piece of paper. And he's, I, I love how he looks at me. And I love the, the scarf and everything around him. Um, yeah, and this is one, one of my favorites too. So as you can see, I'm attached. So this guy is obviously, you know, nowhere to go today. His shoelaces are a bit off, uh, a few layers here. And he sits there just relaxing. I asked him, I lowered myself really down. And this is uh, with a 32 mil. So, um, and this is sort of a going down. Everything is sort of crooked here. Look, the buildings are, and there's lots of rubbish behind him. And he sits there, you know, easy going. So I love these. Um, yeah. We're finishing here. This is more for tourists. Um, so this is my yawning camel. So I actually paid extra to be there early morning and to, um, they convinced me to pay a bit extra. So I didn't want all the tourists to be, I didn't want all the, and I, I they, they, can, they said, look, if you go through here, they showed me a 3D model, they're trying to hustle me. Uh, it's all about bargaining. Um, and then you can take photos from here and you will see it from a hill. It's not really a hill, but anyway, it's a bit of a vista. And they gave me a choice whether to ride a horse or to ride a camel, I said camel. And this was my camel, he was quite easy going. And the person who was my guide, he uh, went up the hill somewhere to the left to talk to the guards or to whatever it is, inspectors or whatever. And, um, and then the camel yawned. Uh, they look, he looks, I don't know, it doesn't look distressed to me, but anyway, he was yawning. And these camels were not exactly here. They are from another photo and they were here. So I sort of positioned them here. And then I had to remove all sorts of jet lines, um, moving the clouds. And there were a few um, satellite antennas and some uh, speakers or projectors. And there was a small structure here, sort of a museum. But anyway, this, these are the pyramids. I didn't move the pyramids or anything material here, but um, yeah, fantastic. The pyramids are fantastic. I mean, I didn't want to go there, but I said to myself, how can you be in Egypt and not go to the pyramid? So this beautiful, is- Beautiful yeah. photo of it. You'll be so pleased to get that. I'm very pleased. Uh, look, I did spend maybe 20 or 30 hours here just um, to make sure because this was blown out and you know his head was likely blown out. And then I had to remove Jeep marks and tracks here. There were like dozens of vehicle marks and there were about 50,000 plastic bottles 
and um, yeah, but I think it's timeless. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So because I don't have all those artifacts, this looks, this could have been taken a hundred mm -hmm. or 300 years ago easily. Yeah. Um, aren't, aren't, aren't the pyramids sort of landing pads for spaceships? I mean, that's what Stargate says, isn't it? Look, you belong to the deep state. I, I already recognize your voice. Um, I don't know about that. I think they are beautiful, but <laughs> I don't understand. How can they be landing? But look, they, there is a lot of theories about astronomical, I mean, how they are pointing and, and you know the axis and how accurate they are and why they are at this position. I saw a lot of videos after that, um, uh, why they were built and you know they were actually covered with something very glittering um, if you come closer, you obviously can climb on these. These are huge rocks. Some of them are 80 tons. 80 tons is the weight of a, of a full trailer. You cannot, there is nothing that can lift something that heavy um, today, or, or um, they don't know how they, there's lots of theories. And, you know, maybe there's tunnels inside with graves. We don't know. It's, it's very um, elaborate. Yes, Stargate related. This is from E. Don't, don't mention her name, please. Um, yeah, and we're going, I'm a bit of sarcastic. So there's another, he is actually sort of a, a tourist, sort of, uh, he brought his camel. He really wanted me to pay. And I was going to pay him. I just didn't want all the tourists to come. There were a few tourists, but I needed to get the shot and I took a few. So this is not retouched. Um, this is how I saw it on the day. And he was standing there and the camel was slightly above him. And then the next shot, there were tourists here. So, um, and that's the, this, this pyramid here is actually um, this pyramid in this photo. Um, yeah, so yeah. And then it became too harsh. You can see the shadow and there's lots of people and all that, but um, yeah, I mean, this is my pyramid photos. Let's see if I have any other photos here on this, um, nothing else here. Is it the end of the tour? Um, yes. So this is Egypt. And I think it's best if I do something else now because no one has said anything. But I want to ask you. You're very shy. Fiona, do you have a microphone? Okay. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm trying to get my act together here. So I want to ask you, would you like to see some studio photography or would you like to see some of my New Zealand work outdoor? Anyone at all? Would you like to- Studio say is what people are asking for here. Okay, studio. So- um, So that's studious ones with I can show I can show either men or women. What would you like to see? Animals. <laughs> animals. So I think I think you know human beings are animals. Um, so I have a, a collection called Eyes to the Soul, where I actually ask women to write a story because a photograph is two-dimensional. And so I give them a stage to write something about their lives. And maybe one out of ten does, which is a bit of a challenge, but at least they write, and um, that is an amazing collection. I cannot find a gallery to show these. Uh, this girl I met actually at the Sunday market here, uh, very near me, and she has lots of sun damage. Um, she's divorced, she's got two kids, very beautiful women. Then she gave me a lot of props for other photos. Um, beautiful woman, Abby. Um, and this is a single mom here. Anyway, they write a story. Sometimes um, they were molested or neglected or abused. Some of them had um, addiction. Um, some had violence in the family and some have simple nice dreams. This girl, she put a notice on Facebook. Anyone wants to do photo. Apparently she was traveling back to San Francisco. You can see the Golden Gate Bridge here. And these are cat paws. Uh, and she said to me, uh, in this photo session that she may be pregnant because she vomited that morning. And uh, eight months later, she did give birth, even though she said she was going to have an abortion. So look, we're not going to go to all the stories, but um, lots of stories. Um, 
they share with me. And if you do want to uh, see these stories, I'm gonna put, you have to remember this girl, she is, um, I'm gonna see if I can uh, open my, uh, yeah, I'm gonna put this in another space, but I'm gonna put um, a link here to this, um, to this collection in the chat box and um, maybe Nikki can send it to you um, if you are in the chapel or in the, so it's actually quite an interesting um, to read their stories. Obviously we don't have time. So how I do these portraits, um, I use, let me just put this link here in the chat box. So those of you who have a computer at home, you can actually read their stories. Extraordinary. Um, so I use something called the beauty dish. And guess what? I've actually brought a beauty dish to show you. So it looks like this. Quite big, huh? So it's, um, this is quite a big one. There are smaller ones. Um, but because just, you're sharing the screen, we can't see it, Ilan. Don't you see my uh, my uh, gallery, my my face anywhere? No, we no. can't. Um, Tim's Tim's just having a play around to see. Yeah, we can now. Yeah, okay. we can see you now. Yes. Technology. Anyway, this is a beauty dish. So, look, maybe most of you don't have a studio at home. Um, you don't have to have such a big beauty dish. There are uh, smaller ones. Uh, the benefit of a beauty dish is there is like a dish inside and it sort of spreads the light and it sort of papers around them beautifully and it creates that beautiful circular highlight in their eyes, if you can see. Um, the challenge is if I use just one light is um, there is sometimes sort of an artifact on their forehead because it's only one light and it obviously drops down and it's darker at the bottom. So um, this girl I met at Bunnings, Georgia, beautiful freckles. Um, but it's very dramatic. It, 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 I try not to show the skin too much. There is, I use, I use a, a Nick software um, which is um, Silver FX Pro, but I try to be soft. And sometimes they have beautiful tattoos. Um, this woman came to my studio, but she had lots of cuts in her arms. And I, obviously she did them sort of self-harm. And she, and um, I said, look, I don't want to put you under stress. No, no, I want to do this and all this. So she's a beautiful woman, um, but she's going through some trouble at the time. Um, so, so these photos are created, you know, and I retouch, it takes me about an hour. I try to, you know, balance the background, balance their skin. Um, and some of them wrote beautiful stories. So that link, okay, somebody says here, E says, I can't see it. Well, I hope you can see the screen here. You are sharing. I hope you see these women. Anyway, uh, beautiful women. This woman, this woman did hire me to take some photos of her. It was her 30th birthday. So we went out to do some nude photos um, because she wanted to celebrate uh, her 30th photos. Um, oh, the beauty dish. Well, you can actually just key beauty dish into um, Google and you will see beauty dishes. Um, if you do want to experiment with one, um, there is a company called Godox. Godox, it's a company that sells flashes and they have like a small beauty dish. When I say small, it will be maybe 20 centimeter diameter, not 65. And they have nice uh, sort of uh, strobes and maybe $400 to get a very good strobe that you can actually... Um... So the soft box is asking, e, you don't want to put your full name? Is that purposely just your first initial, um, maybe I'm being facetious, um, but um, so the softbox, oh, it is what everyone calls you E. Okay, well, I'll call you E too, 
Oh, I don't mind. Um, very official, secretive. Um, so softbox is usually square, sometimes rectangle. It usually is bigger and it creates a square in people's eyes. And, so, and it, it's actually much wider. Usually the light is directly, not sure if you can see my hand, it's, there is no reflection. So a beauty dish, I'll open it again. This time, I hope E can see the, my beautiful portrait. Anyway, I'll open this. I think it fell off. So you can actually see if I take this um, cover off, I hope you can still hear me. This is sort of a reflector here, this uh, circular object. So the flash comes from here and it bounces off this um, silver dish and then it bounces into this sort of off-white and then it reflects off to the person. So that's a quite a distinct difference between a softbox which has a direct light, even though it has some, some diffusing element, but it's not as, as, look at this beautiful, how it tapers away here softly. And Are you only using one light, Elan? Usually one light. I do have other lights. I First I photograph with more than one light. It's so difficult to photograph with more than one light. And this is more dramatic. Uh, and this is what I want to achieve. Now, this is not using a softbox and it's not in my studio. Um, still a nice girl. She did everything in the book to prevent me from taking good photos of her. Very hard she case. Really... Pardon? We're asking if she's Jewish because she's got some Jewish lettering on her uh, collarbone area. Hebrew. Hebrew, Hebrew yeah. Um, she is, she, I think her dad is Jewish. Um, this girl made a huge fortune by the age of 20. And then that's not always healthy. And, um, and because she's, she, she, she actually retired at 20, um, she does things that are a bit outside. Um, and apparently she dated my son, even though he erased it from his memory. Um, so yeah and she wouldn't let me take good photos of her this is the best photo i took of her but it was so hard and she wouldn't sign a model release form look she's a trouble but anyway um this is a beauty dish and i love this woman this is the maybe the third time i photographed her um a bit of a sad mona lisa type um maybe a bit dark here in this um yes so this is a nude model. I actually had to pay her. She came from Canada, but um, she didn't understand why I asked her to hide her breast because she feels so comfortable. I did have beautiful photos with her. I hope to show them to you in about five minutes uh, outdoor. Um, yeah, and this is a French girl. And again, this is not using a beauty dish. You can see the big difference. This is using a flash. I tried to emulate, but I a slightly vignetted. Um, I did take some beautiful photos of this lady outdoor. She's a single mom and she invested in having her breast done again. Um, she says they are tear dropped and that's why, yes, and she loves her breast and all that. So she gave birth to her son when she was 12. Catholic family and she lives with her family with her other four sisters uh, in a chicken farm uh, near Wellington. Um, Another French girl, uh, Gwen Lacour. Yes, and this lady is from Africa. Um, beautiful, braids, 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 uh, braids. Um, again, this is not using my beauty dish. This is in Wellington. There's a good story about her beautifully posing. And these flowers remind her of her grandparents. Um, and she had lots of sort of very red bruises here, which I retouched. And she explained to me only later in an email that this is sort of an obsessive compulsive that she itched herself. She said to people, it's eczema, but it was her uh, sort of, um, yeah, sort of troubled. But she was hoping this session would um, be, this was her first day without antidepressants. 
and this was, you have to read the story actually, it's quite a good story. Um, these women are so courageous and they're so vulnerable in writing those stories. I met this woman at 10 a.m., 10 p.m. She was late coming from Christchurch. She's a caregiver and she's a dancer and she loves skateboard. So I met her at 10 p.m. I took beautiful photos of her. I'll show you in a minute outdoor. And then at midnight, I brought her to my studio. Um, such a, an open, um, such a beautiful woman. And uh, yeah, very, very um, strong personality, very confident. Um, this girl, there's a sad story with her. I mean, when I say sad, she, she said she's now addicted to alcohol, which is better than being addicted to heroin. So um, she's now on her recovery, which is a good story. Um, this is a bodybuilder, Vendi. I took some sessions with her. She is so strong. Oh, and what a body. So this is Vendi from Czech Republic. Also a good story. You have to look at that. Um, and this is a photographer. And this is another lady um, with an interesting story. And she never wrote me a story. Look, it's very hard to get those stories. Um, and this is a lady from Spain, I think. Um, played beautiful volley, not volleyball, handball, um, but wasn't happy, wasn't happy. Interesting uh, tattoos. And this is a lady that is a member of the North Shore Photographic Society. And when I saw her hair, I thought fantastic. And look how courageous she look. And she has these tattoos with a whale on her right arm and the hair is fantastic. And I love this portrait. She doesn't like it that much, but you know, um, this is an amazing story about this woman. So she had her ears like elf. Don't, you don't have to do that. Um, so she covered her and her um, tongue is pierced so she can actually move her tongue, you know, like a snake. Oh. And um, she had tattoos in places you won't believe. And yeah, so that's an interesting care. She's a very beautiful woman. She takes care of her mom, takes care of her child. Um, yeah, very, very smart, very passionate woman. And um, this is a legal assistant. Um, and she, her dad is from India. Her mom is from Kashmir. And she's British. Um, and she does a lot of Pilates and yoga. Very strong woman uh, in her mid-30s, I think. Um, yeah, so this is my mom, huh? So you can understand all my anger management issues. And my daughter says I have negative aura and bad vibrations and no self-awareness. Um, lately, I've been suffering from um, male chauvinism. I'm condescending and um, I have other issues as you can understand. Fiona is smiling. I don't see anyone else. Now Timothy has put everything in the dark. Jen hasn't said a word to me all day. E is silent and Nicole, yeah. No one says anything. No one puts any note here. Oh, soft boxes. I does see. mom and does mom live in New Zealand? Say again. Does mom live in New Zealand? No, she lives in Israel. She broke her hip about five months ago, and she didn't do an X-ray on time. She didn't. She didn't. She took herself. Look, it's a sad story, but she had two vaccines um, already for uh, the corona, but it was very hard for her. She couldn't like be with her grandkids and. She couldn't actually do some physiotherapy. It's all very scary. Um, she lives in Israel and this is about two years ago. Yeah, um, I, won, I won a bronze for that at the Silver Awards. They should have given me more, but I think they said there's some artifact on her shoulders. I don't know, those judges are idiots. Um, but they wouldn't let me judge my photos for some reason. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is my Albert Einstein impersonation. And what else do I have? Anything else here? Or is that the end of my, this is maybe the end. So can I show you, thank you for uh, your comments, Nicole. She is gorgeous. She's such a character and look, it's hard for her. She's 85 and, you know, she says, what's the point, you know, and, you know, she can walk now. She walks like a duck, she says. And I try to speak to her four or five times a week. And if she has the energy, Timothy has been lit up. Fiona is doing something with her fingers. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, I notice a, a lot of them have kind of a, um, 
a light circle sort of thing around it. Is that just the intensity in the center coming from that beauty um, thing? So the beauty dish will create sort of semi circle here because it's actually quite above them. It's, um, not... it's actually the, the background behind them as well. Yeah, so I do. Or, some or is that something you do in post? I actually do it in post. There is a little bit of vignetting here. Okay. Sometimes it's more noticeable. I try not to make it extremely noticeable. I like the vignetting. I mean, here a lot it's of more... it's um, it's it's not actually black and white. It looks kind of bronzy. And, it is. It is um, sepia. It is sepia. Quite... Oh, sepia. Okay. Do you want to just talk us through maybe your um, workflow in getting that kind of look? Yeah. How about I'll show some men? Uh, maybe some of you are interested in men. Fiona, do you want to see some men? You can do your fingers. Yes, Fiona is sort of a silent factor here. I like well, that. Well, that might be good, but we're almost due for a, a cup of tea time. Oh, so. God, cup of tea. We don't want to miss that cup of tea. No, no. we do not. No. Caffeine. So, or for me, caffeine. So. You, do you want to have a cup of tea and then we continue, or, or is that the time to finish? How much? What's the time? 9.13. Yeah, you cannot yeah, go can... to sleep at 9.13. This is oh, not... So we've got a little bit more time. Okay. Yes, how but... about I talk about my technique while showing you something else? How's that? Yeah, yeah no, that's, that sounds fantastic. Okay. So I hope this is not too explicit. You have to tell me if this is, if this is bad. Is this, I mean, look, if you went to Florence, you would see there was a guy called Michelangelo uh, at the time. I actually went to see his David. Um, so David is 4.7 meter tall. I looked up at Wikipedia and he's not wearing anything. So at the time he was considered the sexiest man alive, Fiona. And um, I don't know, he's only slightly conservative and I have trouble, but look, this girl is fantastic. I bought 20 kg of clay and I um, left it at the deck for two days until it cracked. Um, I put it on the plywood and then she lied on it um, and Alicia got married about a year ago, middle of lockdown here in Auckland. And I won a few big awards for these. Uh, she's wearing clay. Fiona, this cleans the skin. You should try that. I'm saying Fiona because I don't know, Kirsty sort of went away. Maybe I scared her off. Um, no, I'm still here. I'm still oh, here. Oh, Kirsty, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Do you like Alicia? Is this, is this okay or is this really bad? I'll no, check this with the is very cool. Very vicar, cool. Look, we already established that Jesus wasn't so. Anyway, um, it's cool. So anyway, this girl came to my studio. I actually paid her because she said she needs something for makeup. And she came. She didn't do her hair. She had so many acnes or I think it was either um, bait bugs or fleas. I mean, I've never seen anyone. Look, it was really bad. And she was fidgeting. I think it's sort of withdrawal from drugs. I don't know, but the whole thing, what I'm trying to say to you, she kept telling me she didn't want me. Look, my cat is scratching the door. She may climb in here. Oh God. So, okay. Yes, you have to let the cat in. Um, she wants attention. She's gonna climb on the table in a minute. Uh, we have this cat for about 15 years and she suffers from um, Parkinson's. So when I tick my mouth, she goes like that. So um, Fiona is laughing. And so anyway, I couldn't talk to this woman because she just did her own thing, but she did bring these garments. I took her to the beach at night and I took these photos and I, yeah. So this is a good photo, I think. But uh, this is a neighbor. This is sort of midday, but it looks slightly dark. I think she looks beautiful um, lying on these rocks. This is beginning. I then improved my technique. My cat is coming into the picture any minute now. She's just thinking about jumping. This is my nymph. So my cat is here. Just want to say hello to the picture. Those of you who don't believe me. Um, the cat thinks she's a bunny. She's not really into photography. Fiona is happy. Good day, cat. Um, her name is Maya. And uh, she's got blue eyes. Maybe we'll bring her to the camera-ish. Yes, come push, on, push, baby. push, 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 push. Yes, wow. she, doesn't, she doesn't know, she doesn't understand English. Um, she just wants some cuddling or food or something. She's gonna jump again now that we have her. Lots of fluff all over me now. Okay, so she's 15 and I'm the only one who takes care of her. So this is my nymph. Um, there's a little bit of Photoshop here. That rock is not 
in the middle of the ocean like that, but it's, I belong to the deep state. We already established uh, Mossad and fake news is my middle name. Um, so I think you saw that woman previously. She's quite um, anorexic. I, I organized with, with her and then there were a lot of mosquitoes. So I actually had to go back to the studio to bring some, this is in my neighborhood. And I brought this mosquito repellent and I actually brought a rope and I put some cloth because I understood there was a walkway. My kid go to that, my kids used to go to that primary school. So after we started the shoot, kids came back from school. They went through the walkway. And then 15 minutes later, a woman comes running and she says, my son said there is a dead body here. So we all laughed and she understood the body is alive, but I did ask her not to call the police. Police came to my studio the next day and they left a business card here while I was jogging. My wife asked me, what did you do? And I had to explain to her, I did nothing. Anyway, they came to the studio three days later. I invited them. They saw the photos. I said, there's nothing here. I mean, I don't see anything. You see more at the beach. The cat is on the table again. Um, so I showed them about 200 photos and they really wanted to speak to this woman. But this woman is from France. She's a caregiver. He doesn't have a citizenship. I said, no, I will talk to her. And they really wanted to speak to her. I said, the buck stops here. Have you ever said that? You sound so important, Kirsty, when you say the buck stops here. So I said that and the police officer was not happy. She was the woman, the man was smiling. He was laughing, uh, not laughing, but anyway, for now she said, and I look, so I cannot give my, anyway, it's, I get into trouble, indecent exposure, but I, anyway, you have to be careful. So, and this is the same woman I said to the, you, you know, she was a bit um, frail um, with the tattoos. I said to you, you're going to see, this is actually in the Needin at Tunnel Beach, if you know the place. And this is from above. I'm using a very um, wide angle lens. If I click here to see file information, I know the T is getting cold, so I'm trying to be quick. This is um, 12 millimeters, which is my favorite. Um, it's a zoom, slightly distorting things, but look, she is be behind. It looks like I'm in a drone because this is how small she is with all the seaweeds and the rocks. Um, this is the Huntress. So it's a long story, but she brought the rifle. She's a hunter. She brought the stags. She brought the skins. I brought the suitcase and the dog. And the judges at the NZIPP Iris Award said that the dog is the master. I don't care. I think it's classic, fantastic. Um, I hope it's okay, Kirsty. It's okay, Kirsty. The the photo is good. No, maybe. No, uh, I'm not sure about that. Not one, your thing. Honest. Okay, <laughs> this is. Um, I want a gold for this one. It must be good or better than average. So this is juxtaposition. So both are bare. This is actually in camera capture. There's no Photoshop here. Um, so both are bare, but the tree cannot hide its scars. It's a old, I think, Macroporco or Rimu tree, but um, maybe you know better than I. And um, she was enjoying every minute. I was freezing with three layers with a leather jacket, as you would. And she enjoyed every minute. Um, and we had to do it at night to remove because there was lots of clutter here in the background. Um, fantastic. I think fantastic. Yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, so this is the... What sort of flash do you use at night? For that so one? I use two flashes here. I'll go back if I can. How do you go back? Um, I use two flashes. One, I put them both in vertical position. They were on stands without any reflection. So they were direct flashes. And these are Godox 860. So they're not too expensive, something like $300 each um, with a remote trigger. So um, you can see the shadow of her arm here. And so one is directed at the bottom of the tree and her from this side. And the other one was directed at the top of the tree because this is this is one fiftieth of a second at 200 ISO. So I had to get enough light at F6.3. I, I, yeah, I could have done F5 or F4, but F6.3, I wanted to get the depth of field-ish. I didn't need that much. But anyway, 200 ISO is still good in my book, um, even 1000 ISO for that matter. 
and she'd She's easily beautiful. have had a number of um, women posing because there's a lot of places in that tree. You know, they could, you could have had a lot of people in different shapes and places. Well, she posed in in in. Believe me, I took about 600 photos that evening. This is not one photo. Um, she posed all over the place. She was, she, she's a lawyer and a psychologist, and now she's a sex therapist, as you would. Um, and her language in Facebook is so explicit that it makes me difficult to read. But she, like I called her, I, didn't, I said to her, we need to go to this place because first I wanted her to go into some water reservoir and or just a stream. And she said, do I need to wear anything? Like she understood immediately that this is what the theme here. So she had no problems. Um, yeah, some women are extremely comfortable. Um, so this is the nude model. I just took her for 15 minutes to this location. This is in a quarry. And I got into trouble because last time I went there, there is a high school nearby and apparently I need permission. God, this is very hard. So. This was before I needed permission and she posed beautiful just for 15 minutes. But she said that um, there is men, there were three men, I mean, boys and teenagers playing soccer about 50 or 60 meters away. And she said they were oogling. Am I saying it correctly? Oogling? So, I mean, men, that's what you do. I mean, if you're not attracted to women, what's the whole, how would we procreate? How would we make, you know, the generation if we don't look at nude women? This is like part of the game. And the men are being well behaved here. They're not ogling or oogling. <laughs> ogling or oogling? <laughs> ogling. Ogling. So that's what she said. Ogling. I don't see any problem with ogling. But um, yeah, anyway, she posed beautifully in those photos. I think she looks stunning. But um, so the story about this woman, this is in Wellington. I photographed her in a studio. And then she had a driver, uh, her sister's girlfriend um so we went i i i found this sort of um burnt van somebody put that there for me with lots of graffiti the tires are gone and the wind was around 45 kilometers per hour and it was freezing and i set up two flashes and i made sure that the exposure and the camera was set on a tripod and I said to her, you need to run. And I gave her this sort of cow. This is a dead cow's skull. And just hold it there and take off your clothes. And she, I mean, the wind blew up. The second exposure, the whole hair went away and she had like tears in her eyes. So we only took like four exposures in like 15 seconds. And that was that because, I mean, she wouldn't be able to, she would be in hypothermia condition. Um, so that's in Wellington. Um, Remember that girl with the dreads, dreads? I'm not sure. So this is the girl with the beautiful, that I said was very confident from Christchurch. So this is where I took her. This is a cycle path in Auckland. Um, those of you who've seen the pink, pink thingy. And I'm standing on a bridge above her. And like she posed like there's no tomorrow. So this is like the, the motorway in Auckland. Um, yeah, in summer mm, last year. So yeah. Um, this is Gwen Lacour with my cow. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a cow, maybe it's a bull, but it was shot. So it was like, it has a bullet hole here. And uh, this is sort of a underpass under, a, and I asked the people who were working there to turn off the lights because there were the floors and lights. I did some retouching here to the ceiling, but this is a yeah, underpass at night. Mm. This was with an umbrella. So the reflector here was, I think one umbrella, yes, one umbrella. And I gave her the shoes. I think she stands beautifully. Nick Kirsty, is she standing beautifully? I think nice. she's a dancer. That's why we have the beautiful- um, Long legs. Yep. Long legs, thank you. Yes, yep. Fiona is smiling. I think she stands beautifully. I mean, um, this is the, the volleyball slash handball player. And I gave her these beautiful starfish and some shells and yeah, I don't like how she poses, but so this is about, um, so this is again, this is the girl from the van. So this is, she picked me up next time I went to Wellington for an art show or something. She was so excited. She picked me up from the airport. This is the, there is something that breaks the waves, concrete thingies. And the sun was shining 
and the planes were just above us. I'm not sure it's legal to go to that place. It says do not enter, but there's no fence or anything. So anyway, we were there and she posed beautifully against that concrete. Um, yeah. And this is about 300 meters from my studio. This girl posed beautifully. Uh, I did fix her foot. So her foot here in the photo was sort of straight, a bit stretched or whatever. So I took her foot from another photo to make it nice and soft. Um, and I removed some footprints of dogs. Um, this actually in high tide, you cannot see it. Um, and so this, these are rocks are all around Castor Bay where I live. And this is another portfolio. If you want to see that, it's called In the Eye of the Camera. Maybe I'll put the link there. Um, yeah, this is sort of a bodybuilder from Czech Republic. I gave her the tiara and the necklace. Look, you're going into T in a minute. If you have a question, this is using it. You see that it says here 12 millimeters. So I'm very close to her and I'm putting my camera on a monopod, which is held above her. And because it's 12 millimeter, it creates such a huge uh, sort of vista as if I'm really far away, but I have to be careful. The subject has to be relatively in the center. Otherwise it's distorted. And I'm using my phone to trigger the camera because the camera is on top of my sort of monopod, which is held off my waist or maybe up high above me. So I can see there, I create a sort of a, I hope this is not too quick for you. I create a Wi-Fi connection from my phone to the camera. These cameras are sophisticated enough to make, to allow that. And um, I can see what the camera sees, even though the camera is literally two meters away from me. And then I can press a button in my camera to fire the trigger or to adjust the f-stop or, or the speed. Um, and I'm using a flash just to enhance her a little bit. So the flash here, does it give you the, so this is ISO 500, if you can see the screen. And yeah, um, it was really a bit dark, but beautiful, um, beautiful tattoos she has. And we're finishing off Nikki. So this woman is a personal trainer. She wanted to pose on that tree um, and she posed as you see, um, beautiful woman and um, beautiful tree. Um, so these are from above again. I actually, here I'm about four or five meters above her. And after we started the shoot about five minutes later, there were a bunch of people running here. Like they were running and she got so sort of, I said to her, it's gonna be private and those people came running. So apparently this, they do, they run in the beach. No one actually paid any attention to her. After about 10 minutes, she understood they are really running men and women, different ages. They're running in the water or just here and no one paid any attention to her. Then she understood they, this is what they do. They run, they don't care about nude women. So yeah. Um, and there's another beautiful woman here. We actually saw her on the tree, the same woman that was posing on the tree. We're finishing off. Um, this woman helped me a lot with my English. So I met her in a gallery and she said she wanted to pose and that's the result. Um, beautiful. She now moved to Australia because she couldn't find a job here. She majored in English. So that she helped me a little bit with my English is not my native tongue and I don't have a lot of words in my vocabulary. Mm. And uh, here she is again. I think she looks beautiful. Maybe I tucked her in a little bit. So I do use liquify to make them look slightly mm, more erotic and this, but you know, I belong to the deep state so I can do things like that. Um, this is the girl that I said to you was addicted to heroin and now she's addicted to alcohol, but now she's on her recovery, I hope. Um, posing beautifully, I think, on that rock. Fiona? Yes? Kirsty? Okay. Yes. Yep. We have a nod from the crowd. Beautiful. Yep. I mean, look at her. She's like, so most of these women, they tell me, Timothy, um, that Nikki, I'm finishing really quickly. They say to me, this is catharsis. They pose on these rocks. They say, I'm feeling one with nature. This is liberating. Who am I to stop them? And they really feel, I mean, they're quite hot. This is, I think, why they take their clothes off. I mean, yeah, this is the, the same girl that we saw a minute ago, but from above, I think the other one was slightly better. And this is the same girl sitting down. Yeah, same one. 
and this is a different girl. Yeah. And, oh, I love that one. I won a silver for that one in the recent Iris Awards. I think this is more than silver, but the judges, I mean, what can you do is to be judged. Uh, Kirsty is smiling. <laughs> is this good, Kirsty? <laughs> oh, you cracked me up. What, what, is there anything wrong? Do you see, is there <laughs> anything indecent? I mean, she feels, I mean, she obviously enjoys it. I didn't, uh, this is, anyway, it's a collaboration. Um, this woman wrote such a nice, she came here with her boyfriend and very easy going, very, and I touched her once just to move her and she had goosebumps. So I felt, okay, this is it. She was really cool. This is middle of winter, but you know, what do you do for art? I like how these sort of cracks pointed her. And then I gave her a hot soup and her boyfriend was very happy. I photographed him too with his ukulele. So this is my temptation. Do you see the snake? This is a gun placement here in about 400 meters. These bolts used to hold a cannon. And she was really, after about an hour lying there, again, we have the indecent exposure element hovering above our head and because it's public space. And I put a camera really above her on sort of a stand um, and I fired it remotely using my phone and I positioned that rope around her to have this sort of effect. Um, I think you saw her previously, but anyway, um, my temptation, she was really grumpy because she didn't have breakfast in order to be thin. And she does Mardi Gras and uh, this is like the third time she worked with me, um, Ellie Mae Marshall. She's really a good uh, poser. Um, this lady actually paid me money to take her photos um, as you would. And she really was happy. She had two kids and there's some wear and tear around that, but I tucked her in slightly. And this is Vendi, the Czech Republic bodybuilder. And I wanted gold for that one. So I actually put that rope up through the chimney and she was sort of climbing. This was a bunker in Devonport, North Heads, if you go to that location. Um, where's my arrows? My arrows are gone. Um, that's the end. So you're gonna have your tea now. Um, Kirsty, would you like to write a nice review? Um, I'm still thinking about it. Okay, so <laughs> Fiona is laughing. I can put in the notes here, if you'd like to write a nice review, I would love you to write one. I have a Facebook account and a Google account and maybe a trade me account. It helps me in my business to um, find like people can find me in social media and um, only if I get enough reviews, I have lots of reviews, but if you wanna write something like Elon was great, his photography is amazing, outstanding, outrageous, unbelievable, <laughs> uh, confronting, you know, anything that is above the positive. And especially after you saw my cat, she actually lies here beside me. She decided not to go into exposure again. And uh, it's nice of her. She just listens to me, I think, yeah. Um, but if you had a good time, uh, oh, I call them girls, Inger. Women, of course they're women. Did I say girls? Well, thank you for letting me know, Inger. How, yeah, I don't know what I don't know. So I, yeah, don't, I hope I didn't offend anyone. Women, absolutely women and men, not boys. Mm. So absolutely. So I'll put so a link, yeah. So we're going to go and have our cup of tea yes, now. Yes, Nikki, was I okay? Did I deliver on some of what I supposed I was? Yes, it was a very inter interesting, um, illuminating. illuminating. Um, there were some fa fantastic images, amazing images, really amazing images. And we've really appreciated you coming and sharing with us and um, also getting to see your cat, uh -huh. which was... Um, which was fantastic because a number of us, myself included, are cat people. So Look, I'm going to do it again just because you mentioned her. Yeah, She's beautiful tired. pussy cat. Pussy, pussy. Her name is Maya. She doesn't understand English, but she's a good fluffy and she yep. likes cuddling and she likes yep. food. Um, yep. And now I yeah, our cat, our cat does too. Okay. So um, just want to say thank you again for coming and, and sharing with us. We're going to go and put the jug on and um and have a cuppa um and uh we will yeah so hopefully meet again someday well it was my honor and privilege really honest and um thank you so much for uh having me um 
and enjoy your tea. I'll put a link or two in the Zoom and I'll stop the recording in a minute. And um, I want to thank you for having me as uh, presenting in your uh, club night. Fantastic. Thank you. Have a beautiful Thanks. night.